We haven't done a video for a few days. We've been uh, tinkering and just trying to get our heads around some of the uh, ins and outs of the machine. This morning we got a, a load of wood and uh, we're going to build uh, a dust enclosure which uh, will be uh, coming very soon. Um, the other thing we got is a little remote keyboard so uh, when uh, rather than grab going across to the uh, computer we can do it all from oops, all from the keypad which is uh, really uh, quite quite neat so uh, yeah that's uh, going to save some time um, what else have we been doing oh yeah I've been installing the electric still I'm quite finished with that the idea is uh, I'm going to take it across the ceiling uh, to a junction box up there so uh, at the moment I've got a cable running uh, across the floor which is not ideal so uh, um, we have done a couple of cuts but we haven't been overly happy with them but that's uh, been uh, user error uh, one of them I think the, uh, the cutting speed the feed speed was a bit high and uh, it was a bit aggressive on the MDF and the other one was I bought some cheap bits off Amazon and um, the quality is not very good of the cut it was uh, giving quite a rough finish so uh, chalk that down to a bit of a bad experience and a learning curve so anyway what I'm gonna do today is Sandra's done a design uh, which is called flowers and it's a plaque with flower engraving on it and I'm going to cut that so uh, I need to set up the, uh, the last bit of the uh, the zeros and everything else so uh, I'm going to do that. The uh, tools set up in place the uh, board is glued down uh, with the uh, double masking tape method and uh, super glue um, so I think not much more to do than uh, start up. Okay, the uh, Sandra's design is uh, is finished. I don't know if you want to say anything about it. Only that it's done better than it did the last time round because I believe we slowed it down. Still think I've got a little, tiny, tiny little piece missing out of there, but that's probably just due to the design. It was probably just too fine for it to cut it. Okay, well, we can take it off and uh, um, you can do your thing with it. So I've painted the background in black. It's a black texture paste, but I just used it as a paint. And now I'm coming in with some Lumiere by Jacquard. And I'm using a Tim Holtz ink blender just to dab the paint on the surface. I don't want it to go down into the cracks. I just want the paint to be on the very top layer. So I'm coming in with some fairly random colors. Um, 
and I keep doing that until I've got the effect that I like. I've chosen to just sort of blend the colours randomly over the surface rather than colour in set areas. So once I've done that to my satisfaction, I need to go in on the very edge of the frame. And for that, I use a gold texture paste. It's easier to do with the sponge tool than it is to do with a brush on the surface because you're less likely to go over the paint job. So for the sides, I just go in with a traditional brush, a fairly stiff one, to make the sides nice and gold rather than the black that they are now, just to finish it off. So here's on the left the old one that we did with the missing pieces. The one on the right is the one with the pieces filled in. And I think it looks pretty good. I did go in afterwards and retouch the top left section because I discovered it didn't have quite as much paint as it should. But other than that, it remained unchanged. Once the paint had dried, I saw a couple of little areas of the black where some metallic paint had got on. So I just used a very fine artist brush to fill it in with the same black paint that I'd used to start with. This is the gold texture paste that I used. It was bought in little as part of a set and the black came from the same range. And this is the set of Lumiere paints that I've used to do the actual colouring part. They're available in a set of nine colours, some of which are colour shifting and the rest are pearlised. 